Hi guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Now dynamic range is really important and you want to make sure that your photo has got just the right amount. Not enough and your photo can look flat, too much and your photo can look HDR. So in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you a couple secrets on how you can really maximise the dynamic range of your photo inside Lightroom. And I'm going to start right now. Now dynamic range just refers to how many stops of light that your camera can capture. And this will differ from brand to brand, as well as what file format you're shooting in, either JPEG or RAW. RAW photos naturally containing more dynamic range than a JPEG photo. Another big benefit of shooting in RAW is you can actually manipulate that in post, which is what we're just about to do. So take this photo here as a great example of a photo that contains a lot of dynamic range. We've got a very bright sky as well as a very dark background where you can see all of these trees are at the bottom of the photo. So what we really want to do is to have a look at our histogram and work out where that dynamic range needs to be added and then we add it in there and there's a few tricks that we can use inside Lightroom. Now the first trick I'm going to be talking about is actually a shortcut called clipping and clipping is really important something you definitely want to avoid. This is when we overdo our dynamic range and push the photo a little bit too far. Sometimes your photo can look flat that's kind of lacking in dynamic range, but you can go too far. So what we're gonna do is press J on our keyboard. And the colors that you want to avoid appearing in your photo is red and blue, and I'll quickly show you. So what we do is head over to my basics panel. What I'll do is I'll just go to my exposure and I'm gonna slide that over to the right. If I push it too far, red will appear in our image. And this is red over pixels. So these are pixels that are so overexposed, they contain no information. And the same will happen if we underexpose our image. So if I slide this over to the left, we can see blue now appearing in the bottom of our photo. So if you're wondering if your photo's got too much dynamic range, turn on your clipping overlay to check if you've got the right white and black point. So what I'm gonna do is just reset that and let's start from scratch. Now I think this photo is a little bit dark, so what I might do is just brighten it up slightly, but I really wanna set the right white and black point. Now for that, you've got these two sliders here. You've got your white and black sliders, but you might be wondering, well, where in, on that slider is correct? Where is the correct white and the black point? Well, actually, there's a really quick trick in Lightroom. Simply hold down shift and double click on the white slider. What this will do is it will correctly set your white point and then simply hold down shift, double click on your black slider and it'll correctly set your black point. It's really, really useful tool. Now you can see we've got roughly the right amount of dynamic range for this photo. Now what I recommend doing is going to your highlights, manipulating those, maybe bring back some of that information and then the shadows here, I'd also bring that up as there's so much more information in the shadows. A great way of shooting in RAW, you can see how much actual color information is stored in those shadows. So I might bring that up a little bit and bring it down those highlights. But we can actually go a little bit further and kind of dodge and burn the photo. Now dodging and burning is basically just the premise of brightening the brightest points and darkening the darkest points. And it can really add depth to your photo. And we can actually use masks to achieve this inside Lightroom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm quickly go ahead over to my masking panel and just create two masks for this tutorial, a brighter mask and a darker mask. So the first one I'm gonna do is create a linear gradient, select most of the bottom part of our photo. I'm gonna to go to my exposure here and simply drop that down, bringing more information on the left-hand side of the histogram, making sure that I've got true black in my photo. And then what we want to do is basically the opposite. We want to actually affect the highlights and white parts. So for that, we want to look where the highlights are. So for me, it's just behind the mountain. So we might have to create a small cutout mask. So what I'm going to do is create a new mask, go to my linear gradient, and I want to select kind of this portion of the sky, but I don't want it to affect the background. So I'm going to kind of create an intersect mask. So what I'm going to do with my mask selected, go to my settings of the mask, go to intersect mask with, and then select sky. You might not have to do this, but actually for me, because the bright point is behind the mountains, I have to create an intersect mask. Then all I'm gonna do is go to my exposure here, look at my histogram, just before it starts clipping, stop. And now I've got the proper whites and blacks in my photo, and I've got so much more dynamic range. And this trick will work on every single photo. So they're the three things that I recommend using. Making sure your clipping is turned on so you don't go too far, making sure you haven't got any way too overexposed or way too underexposed pixels in your image. That's definitely something you want to avoid. As well as properly setting your white and black point by holding shift, clicking on the white and black sliders. And then lastly, dodging and burning your photo using those two masks. And as you can see, what I'll do is I'll quickly show you the before and after. The photo looks so much better after those three steps. And if this tutorial helped you out, make sure to write it down in the comments below.